Hi everyone. Today we will discuss about the general principles of treating poisons. So this is Dr. Manohar, Professor VJS College of Pharmacy. So in this we are going to cover the contents such as types of poisons, symptoms of the poisons, first aid should be taken when the person is exposed to poisons, diagnosis and treatment. So poison is a harmful effect that occurs when a toxic substance is swallowed, inhaled or come in contact with the skin, eyes or mucous membrane. Poisonous substance includes drugs, vitamins, food, mushrooms, plant, animal venom and so on. The diagnosis of the type of poison is based on the symptoms of poisoned person. Poisons can be divided into two major categories, acute poisoning and chronic poisons. Acute poisons are so potent, can cause severe symptoms within 24 hours. Examples of the poisons, overdoses of anticholinergics, sympathomimetics, cholinergic, sedatives, hypnotics, opioids, etc. Chronic poisons are caused problems only with prolonged exposure or repeated ingestion of a large amount of the chemicals. Example, fluorine, lead, arsenic, calcium, etc. The symptoms caused by the poison depends on the poison, the amount taken and the age of the person. Say for example, anticholinergic drugs. So here the symptoms include increased heart rate, it doesn't have any activity on respiration rate, increased temperature, increased pupil size and decreased bowel uh, movement and decreased sweating. So in contrast, uh, cholinergic, it doesn't have any activity on heart rate and respiratory rate and temperature but decreased pupil size, increased bowel movement and increased sweating. Opioids, uh, consumption of the opioid poisoning Symptoms include uh, decreasing the heart rate, respiration rate, temperature, pupil size, bowel movement and the sweating. And sympathromimetic, increased heart rate, increased respiration, temperature, pupil, bowel movement and the sweating. So here I mean to say that depending on the signs and symptoms of the poisoned person, we can assess what type of poison the person is consumed. First aid for the poisoning. People exposed to a toxic gas should be removed from the source quickly, preferably out into the fresh air. Precautions must be considered to avoid toxic gases such as uh, wearing mask, etc. Immediately shift to hospital for treatment. In chemical spill, all contaminated clothing should be removed immediately. The skin should be thoroughly washed with soap and water. If the eyes have been exposed, they should be thoroughly flushed with water or saline. For treating of the poison person, we have very less time to diagnose and for the treatment. So here we have to do, do these two things, diagnosis and treatment simultaneously in order to save the life of the patient. Diagnosis involves the history, the type of poison and time of consumption of the poison, physical examination such as blood pressure, heart rate, temperature etc. and diagnostics by using urine or blood. Identification of poisons. The major class of poisons belongs to anticholinergic, sympathromimetic, cholinergic, sedatives and opioid. Time of poison consumption and identifying the poison is helpful for the treatment. Labels on bottle helpful to identify the poisons. Physical examination such as temperature, heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, size of pupil, skin, and level of consciousness will give the information like type of uh, poison consumed by the individual. Diagnosis test includes the biochemical test, the urine 
and the blood samples can be checked for the presence of the poison. Treatment includes five steps. Number one is ABC, blood sugar, decontamination, specific treatment, and supportive treatment. Here, we have to maintain the functioning of vital organs. At the same time, we can inhibit the absorption of the poisons. So this is the main motto of the treatment. Airway breathing and circulatory failure. Dyspnea, difficulty in breathing. Cyanosis, forming of the blue coloration. Blue coloration because of the lack of oxygen concentration and tachyphonia. It is repeated increased breathing and increased metabolic acidosis in the presence of a normal partial pressure of oxygen suggests a toxin either decreases the oxygen carrying capacity, example carbon monoxide or reduced tissue oxygen, example cyanide. Circulatory failure can be managed by Trellenberg position that is elevation of the foot at around 15 degrees. Administer 200 ml of the saline to increase the circulation and observe for improvement in blood pressure over 10 minutes. Poison percent normally suffer with hypoglycemia because the increased requirement of the glucose for the brain, heart, immune system and other tissues during this stressful situation. Glucose is associated with alteration in metabolic activity. The chronic opioid exposure is associated with increased sugar intake. So the patient should be supplemented with the glucose for the better treatment of the signs. Next, decontamination. Decontamination means it's removing of the toxin from the body. So it may be uh, includes the gastric lavage to uh, removing of the gastric contents, endotracheal intubations, so to supply a sufficient oxygen to the individual, then activated charcoal, hemodialysis, whole bowel irrigation, and alkaline diuresis. Gastric lavage. A tube is inserted through the mouth or nose into the stomach. Water is poured into the stomach through the tube and is then drained out. This process is repeated several times. So this process is helpful for the patients to remove unabsorbed poisons from the gastrointestinal tract. Endotracheal intubation. If people are drowsy because of the poison, put a plastic breathing tube through the mouth into the windpipe. Endotracheal intubation helps keep the gastric lavage liquid from entering the lungs. It's also called as ventilation. Next, the activated char charcoal. It binds with the poison that's still in the digestive tract prevents the absorption into the blood. The charcoal is taken by the mouth by the cooperative patients. Charcoal does not bind to alcohol, iron or many household chemicals. So here directly we ingest the charcoal which actively bind with this poison chemical and it will not allow the absorption of these poison into the systemic circulation. As a process hemodialysis, the most common treatment if a poison remains in the blood. In hemodialysis, an artificial analyzer is used, uh, is used uh, to filter the poison directly from the bloodstream. Whole bowel irrigation is a treatment method designed to flush poison from the gastrointestinal tract. Poisons that are absorbed slowly such as iron, lead, can be treated by this method. Involves the administration of large quantities of osmotically balanced polyethylene glycol and electrolyte solutions. Alkaline diuresis is a solution containing a sodium bicarbonate is given by the intravenous route. These drugs combined with the acidic drugs and helpful for the elimination through urine. Depending on the specific chemical, 
we can choose a specific antidotes to treat. For example, estaminophen, N acetyl cysteine, benzodiazepines, flumazenil, botulinum, botulinum antitoxin, cyanide, hydroxocobalamine, distalis, distalic antibodies, heavy metals, chelating drugs. Toxicity, deferoxamine, permethanol, ethanol, and formipirazole, opioid, naloxone, for arginine phosphates, atropin, snake bite, antivenom, heparin, protamine. Poisoning often requires the supportive care to stabilize heart, blood pressure, and breathing until poison inactivated. The treatment is needed to control seizures, fever, vomiting, etc. The principle for the treatment of all poisoning is maintaining functioning of vital organs. The support vital functions such as breathing, blood pressure, body temperature, heart rate, inhibition of the poison absorption, increasing the elimination of the poisons and specific antidotes and preventing of the re-exposure. Hope this video is helpful. Thank you.